Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, May 12, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, it's Patch Tuesday, of course, and if you look at the, sort of the high-level summary, this Patch Tuesday actually doesn't look too bad. It's only 55 vulnerabilities patched, four of them are critical, and three vulnerabilities were previously disclosed, but none of them has so far been exploited. But once you look closer, you may have discovered the remote code execution vulnerability in the HTTP protocol stack, or HTTP.sys. Uh, this is labeled as CVE 2021 31166 and it's exploitable without any user interaction or authentication. So, a uh, neat, warmable vulnerability. So, what is HTTP.sys? Well, HTTP.sys is essentially the implementation of the HTTP protocol stack that Windows is using. IIS, for example, is built on top of it, but not really clear if IIS itself is sort of vulnerable here, but pretty much anything that implements HTTP on Windows, which is a lot of different pieces of software, are likely using HTTP.sys and uh, may be vulnerable here. What may save you here is that only specific Windows versions are vulnerable. First of all, Windows 10, which of course may be used as a web server and often is, but not doing that by default. And then Windows Server 2004 and 20H2, uh, which of course is the sort of latest and greatest version of Windows Server. So you may not necessarily have upgraded uh, to these versions. So one of those rare occasions where keeping staying a little bit behind the latest and greatest versions may actually help you. Microsoft does rate exploitation of this vulnerability as more likely. And well, with a CVSS score of 9.8, I'm pretty sure that attackers are already working on exploits. So patch it, patch it soon. Even if the system isn't specifically used as a web server, because then again, a lot of other software may be using HTTP to communicate, and as a result, may be using HTTP.sys. The second noteworthy vulnerability has actually a slightly higher CVSS score, 9.9. .9. It's a remote code execution vulnerability affecting Hyper-V. Personally, I rate it as a little bit less severe than the HTTP.sys issue because First of all, not everybody necessarily runs Hyper-V and in order to exploit this vulnerability, an attacker would essentially have to launch an attack from a guest virtual machine. And with all the recent issues with Microsoft Exchange, uh, well, uh, we do have a couple more exchange vulnerabilities, but they're only rated important and moderate. More, for example, feature bypass vulnerabilities. There's also a remote code execution vulnerability, but apparently it does require some user interaction. The remaining vulnerabilities are sort of more of the same as we have seen before, vulnerabilities in various office software and the like. Uh, maybe one reason we haven't seen so many vulnerabilities, individual vulnerabilities in this update is that, well, we actually don't have that many browser vulnerabilities with a lot of this moving over to Google Chrome now being used as the core behind Microsoft Edge. And then we have a new paper by Matthew van Hoof regarding new attacks against Wi-Fi networks. Wi-Fi networks are able to, first of all, fragment larger frames in order to increase the chances of the data being received. They're also able to aggregate multiple frames together into one frame in order to take advantage of the higher efficiency of sending more data and less header. Now, the way this is exploited is that, for example, handshake messages are often not encrypted and an attacker may send an 
aggregated frame that has multiple subframes. There, the first subframe is a handshake message, so it's not encrypted. And the second frame is an also unencrypted data frame. Now, the system should require that the data frame is encrypted, but by receiving that handshake message first, uh, it essentially does skip the requirement uh, to encrypt the following data frame because they're both sent as part of this same aggregated frame. And as a result, the attacker would be able to inject plain text into a connection. Another vulnerability identified relies on the first feature fragments. And typically, if you have multiple fragments, they all use the same key in order to encrypt these fragments. Well, it turns out that again, based on implementation flaws, it is possible to use mixed keys for fragments. And as a result, for example, client data could be exfiltrated. Lastly, a fragment cache attack. Uh, this means that fragments that haven't been used so far are not cleared from memory. So an attacker could send fragments that would then later come into play as another user is sending data to the same device. It's one of those issues where it's really hard to sort of do it justice uh, in uh, this uh, couple minutes of podcast. So if you are interested in more details, I recommend uh, you go to the link in the show notes. And there's also a Usenix presentation, a recording of that presentation included as part of the webpage. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.